Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again uh, for our Sunday morning worship service here at Spring Hill United Methodist Church here in High Point, North Carolina. I am Pastor Benjamin Free. We thank you for joining us on this first Sunday in September. Uh, before we get started with our worship service, as we always do, a couple of announcements. Uh, just a reminder that we have Bible study uh, on Wednesdays at 12 noon and 6 p.m. Uh, we will be wrapping up this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, and finishing out the book of Acts. So if you can, please join us. Uh, as well, we are moving the uh, prayer line to uh, Friday evenings at 530, uh, and it will be on the uh, conference call line. Uh, so we'll be making that change as well. Also, uh, you will be receiving this week uh, some of our updates for September, but I just want to remind everyone that we are approaching charge conference season, so in the upcoming weeks, uh, we will be sending out dates for uh, upcoming committee meetings uh, in preparation for our charge conference that will be in October. Uh, and charge conference will actually be on October 22nd, uh, Thursday, October 22nd uh, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, but like I say, you all will be receiving uh, the updates via mail, and we will also have uh, sent some calls out to remind everyone. That being said, let us now uh, prepare ourselves to call one another to worship this morning with our call to worship. Now is the time to awaken to the presence of God, the eternal spirit. Now is the time to come alive with our songs of praise. Today we open ourselves to the power of the spirit in our lives. Today we extend our hands in caring toward humanity. We do all this because we have responded to the ministry and message of Jesus Christ, whose people we are. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let us open with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come this day to worship and thank you for the many ways you guide our lives. We ask that our hearts, our ears, and our spirits may be open to your healing words of love. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and we pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Our scripture lessons uh, for this morning are first coming from the book of Psalms. And this morning we will be reading Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Now hear the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed, 
This is glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Beginning at verse 15. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, Tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Verse 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14, beginning with verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment or fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunk drunkenness, not in debauchery, and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Verse 14. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare 
this morning's message, I'm going to ask that you join me in a brief word of prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious, merciful God, we thank you once again. Coming together as the body of Christ, we come humbled, ready to serve, ready to receive what you have us receive in order that we may go out and continue to be disciples, bringing light to a world that is in need. We thank you for this opportunity. So we ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, as we know and as we spoke of before, uh, in this letter to the Romans, we know Paul is uh, writing to a damaged community, a, a community that is somewhat divided. And he's writing on what true Christian discipleship looks like and giving these reminders or handing down these thoughts uh, in order to bring this community together. So as we travel this journey as the church, the body of Christ, it is key that we take heed to these instructions and these reminders that Paul lays down for this church amongst the Romans. And in beginning these instructions, Paul reminds us of that key commandment. He says, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled that law. And Paul, sort of speaking, we know we have all these uh, social debts. We pay bills. We, 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 we have credit cards. We do everything. We pay them on time. And we know that these things can be paid in full. But what Paul is pointing out is how that love can never be paid in full. Love is greater than any monetary source or anything material that we can think of. So he's calling us to uh, uh, remember to love because we are always indebted to love and showing love to one another. Sometimes we forget this and love becomes conditional. Well, you've done this for me or I need you for this. Oh, I love you. But uh, we know that love has to come with, un, with no conditions, no strings attached as we were even reminded in chapter 12. We should be outdoing one another. And Christ reminded us with those two great commandments, the first being loving God, the second being loving your neighbor as you love yourself. So when we think about this, this love that we're indebted to, it starts with that love of God. And knowing this, it allows us to extend that same love of God for us to our neighbor as Christ commanded us. And then we know we have the, the, the law of Moses that came because once again, we know that a lot of these early converts to Christianity were, were uh, devout Jews who were still practicing uh, the customs and following the law. And Paul reminds them of the commandments, you know, do not commit adultery, don't murder, don't covet. But Paul says something interesting. He says all these are summed up in this word. And he reminds us as this community needed healing, love your neighbor as 
yourself. And we know that in Mark chapter 12, when Christ gave these commandments, commandments, he reminded them that there is no other commandment greater than these, speaking of those two great commandments. There are no other commandments greater than these, love. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Brothers and sisters, going back to how Paul is making this summation of all the laws into this concept of love, this law of loving one another. And Christ, once again, in Matthew chapter 22, when giving these two commandments, said that on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we know that he's just reminding us of that gospel that Christ was bringing, that everything is fulfilled through him. Love, love of the Father. Christ, we know, was obedient to God's will. For his purpose. Loving your neighbor as your, yourself. We know Christ came and healed. And performed miracles. And sat with the lowly. The afflicted. The poor. That love was the fulfillment. Of all. Those commandments and law. But we know that the love doesn't stop with just the thought. You know, Paul is not simply just speaking of this concept that we can't uh, touch or feel. But he's speaking to showing this love through your actions. And as uh, he spoke in chapter 12, as we studied last Sunday, he reminded us, contribute to the needs of the saints and extend that hospitality to strangers following that commandment of loving our neighbor. That love comes with that action, that mutual affection that we spoke of. Reciprocal. And we should be trying to outdo one another in righteousness because love is not a debt that can be paid. It should be ongoing that we commit to it and stay indebted to it. Because with this love, there's a healing power. With love, it brings us into communion with God that love to where we have the best interest for all, not just our own gratification. Because as Paul lets us know that besides all this, we know what time it is and how it is now the moment that we wake up from our sleep for salvation is nearer to us than when we became believers. This waking up is not talking about a literal sleep, but a spiritual sleep. Because sometimes we can get comfortable in our position, our status, what we do with the church, how we're seen in the community. And then we fall asleep and turn to things that pull us away from that true love, that love of God that is spoken of. And then we neglect brothers and sisters or we, uh, we become oblivious to the needs of the saints and the communities where our love is not being shared mutually. We're asleep spiritually. That's what Christ 
came to do and wake us up. And we know, I can't remember where I heard this from, but, you know, I heard uh, somebody speaking uh, uh, of this. They said, you know, uh, everybody may have the alarm clock set, but it still doesn't mean that we all wake up at the same time. But in knowing this as a community, we have to be that sounding alarm to wake one another up spiritually, bringing us back to those spiritual disciplines. Relying on prayer, relying on the word of God, the gospel of Christ, relying on our faith and our trust in Christ in showing us the way to love. That time is near, even nearer to us than when we first accepted Christ. And that Holy Spirit fell on us and told us that we need to commit our lives to Christ. That time is nearer. We're preparing ourselves. But it starts with that love for one another. Then Paul tells us, then lay aside those works of darkness. Put on the armor of light. Put on your Jesus suit or your, your Jesus gown and, and prepare that light of the love. Turn away from those things that continue to divide us and separate us from God. Our ways that are not God's ways. Those things that keep us divided. We have enough going on in the world that's keeping us separated and, and divided. We don't need to add more to it because we're adhering to our ways and not the ways of God. So in that, once again, we lean on that trust, that trust in what Christ brought to us. Trust in that purpose God has for us. And in that we will live honorably as in the day and not revel and not be in that drunkenness, that debauchery, quarreling and jealousy because we're overcoming our own desires in order to extend that hospitality to our brother our sister, our neighbor, that stranger, seeing to the needs of all the saints. And as Paul put it, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify ourselves. You know, I, I, I had a talk with uh, my daughters on Friday because, uh, you know, they, they weren't doing what they were supposed to. And it was something that we've gone over before and something myself and their mother has told them. And I said, you, well, you know you're not supposed to do that, yet you did it in anyway. And I said, well, I went through all the things. I said, well, you know, Daddy would like to do this and do that instead of having to help you with your work, your schoolwork, or make you lunch or do something. I'd rather be sitting there listening to some music, relaxing, taking a nap, whatever. But I told them sometimes it's not about what we want to do, but about what we should do. And that's what we are reminded of, making no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. It's not about what we want to do, but about what we should do. The earthly mindset versus the eternal mindset. 
We're called to think eternally beyond this fleshly existence. Make no provision. And just as in our gospel lesson that we read this morning, verse 18 said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Those things that bind us, pride, greed, selfishness, those things will bind us even in heaven when we come before God in the kingdom. But whatever we loose and let go and don't allow to hinder us and separate us from the kingdom will also be loosed in heaven. We have to let go of those things that divide us from righteousness, divide us from loving one another. Let them go so they will be let go in heaven. Where your heart lies, so will your treasure. So brothers and sisters, we have to wake up spiritually to that commandment of love. Stop sleeping on the fact that others are in need. Extend that hospitality. Because once again, if we serve a God who loved us endlessly to where God knows every hair on our head. If we place our love in that type of love, how can we not love one another and love our neighbor, love the stranger? So brothers and sisters, wake up. Don't stay asleep. Open your heart and let God lead the way so that love will take over and all will be fulfilled in Christ and the love of Christ. I give you this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Remember to love and always keep the doors of your heart open for one another, especially in these particular times. So before uh, we send you off with the benediction, just want to remind everyone that uh, we will be having our service of word and table. So please uh, go ahead and prepare your elements as we prepare to dismiss from the worship service. Please receive this benediction. The peace of Jesus Christ has been poured out to you. Now go into the world bringing hope, forgiveness, and peace to others. God's peace is with you always. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is now time for our service of word and table. Let us now prepare. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. 
that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. Gave thanks to you and broke the bread. Gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now 
receive the body and the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ broken for you and I. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you and I. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.